Right guys, come and train, push with me. Exercise number one, line cable Y rays. Exercise number two, cable fly. Exercise number three, low incline Smith machine press. Exercise number four, flat converging chest press machine. Exercise number five, a tricep biased narrow grip press. Exercise number six, overhead tricep extension. Exercise number seven, single arm cuffed cable lateral. Welcome back guys. The first session and first episode of the off season series. So, on the construction begins guys, we're going all in with this off season. So, this is the second week post show now. And I am only a pound or two over my stage weight. So, so far, the post show is going incredibly well. My sleep has been restored, which is the main most important thing. Um, hunger is extremely high, yes, but it's supposed to be. Um, food isn't that low. I have managed to take a food progression just now and I will do some full days of eating for you just so you can see exactly what I'm eating and what I have been eating post-show and I will break things down for you as to what the approach has been like post-show as well in a separate video but at the moment up until now uh, the calories have been around 4,300 on training day uh, and 3,470 on rest day uh, and I will do a full day of eating breaking things down for you both on training day and rest day but today is the first session of my new off-season programming uh, at Ultra Fields Rotherham and I'm very much looking forward to getting stuck into the session and taking you along on the ride. Uh, it's a very similar setup to what you have been seeing with some slight adjustments and reintroducing some movements that I very much enjoy. So I am very much looking forward to getting this off-season series going and introducing you to the new off-season series that I will share with you in pursuit of more mass and yet taking another step up in progression that I need with my physique development to be more competitive and as always chase progress above all guys so let's get it game time to set up your logbook. My preference is actually using an, a normal A4 notepad. I lay out each session on each individual page and then I spread it out into sessions with my session being on the left hand side alongside of the details of the session listed and then I will have six sessions listed across the board on one page and that will be split into each individual sessions which will be push A, pull A, legs A and then B variations. 
That gives me a full training block to actually work through on that given page. Being able to actually refer back to the loading that I was using in previous sessions without the need to flip pages over. Now, the lot of points at the top, this is where I actually add my body weight and the date of the session and what week I am currently in um, within my training phase. Whether it's prep or off season, I always add specific weeks that I'm currently in. Now, this gives me full data to work from and it gives me full transparency and a perfectly laid out logbook that is easy to use and easy to refer back to. Now, use it, let me know how you get on and this is the most beneficial way and the best way to use a logbook. The line cuffed cable Y rays. Now, key points for this exercise is you actually want to do it on the floor, lying as a bracing point. Then as you get into the stretch position, actively think about punching your fist forward and make sure that the actual fist is facing the cable. From that position, think about reaching out and back, aiming for your upper arm to finish in line with the floor. Pause in the shortened range at the very top, once your arm is above your head, and then as you are reaching back and in, again, make sure you control the eccentric and take the pause in the stretch, actively punching your fist forward and allowing your shoulder to come to that protraction. This exercise is not only going to train your medial delt, but also tying some rear delt and traps, making it a perfect exercise as a starting movement before you go into heavy pressing, because again, it is an excellent exercise to train your delts, but it's also a fantastic functional movement, um, giving you plenty, plenty of quality stimulus, but also functionality around your scapula and your delt. So this is the rear delt cable fly. Key points to get the most out of this exercise is you want to ideally use a cuff either around your wrist or actually hold onto it. Then as you get into the position and ideally have a bracing point for your chest for the bench or the pad, if you don't have a pad on your machine, use a bench, brace your chest into it, keep your ribcage packed down with your core braced, then actively think about punching your fist forward and allow your shoulders to come into slight protraction. Then think about reaching out to the side rather than pulling back and focusing on touching the walls at the side of you rather than pulling back. That will allow you to work your rear delt in isolation, preventing too much of upper back actually coming into play. Uh, so just that single cue of reaching out rather than back will allow you to stay a little bit more on point when it comes to the rear delt work. Make sure you are controlling the end ranges and pausing the stretch and pause in the shortened range, making sure that you own every millimeter of the rep. Uh, especially trying to train such a small muscle like the rear delt, you need to make sure that your focus and precision is absolutely on point. favorite exercise of all time, low incline smith press. Smith press in general is my favorite. Now, the most non-optimal exercise, but for me, probably the most optimal. Main reason why I love smith machine presses and smith machine work in general 
It offers me great stability and safety, which is definitely going to be better than free weight motions. Now, secondly, I very much enjoy a Smith machine press, a Smith machine variations. So when you do an exercise that offers you stability, safety, and enjoyment, these three things for me are definitely going to outweigh the benefits that I'll get, for example, from using a machine that converges. So although on paper, it's not the most optimal exercise, for me, it really is. So think outside the box, guys, and write that down. Low incline Smith or Smith machine in general. The cues here are very, very simple. As you unwrap the bar, make sure you keep your wrist straight. As you are coming down and in, don't just think about coming down. Keep your chest up and front of your shoulders and think about rowing the bar down and into your chest. Pause onto your chest and then drive through nice and hard, aiming to bring your arm across and in as you are pressing through. Now, posture wise, you want to make sure that you keep slight extension for your upper back keeping your chest up and then keep your lower back in a neutral position and the way i like to do that is i like to contract my glutes slightly and then keep my core braced that way you create more pressure between your diaphragm and your pelvis giving yourself more stability into your presses so guys that's the tutorial for all your pressing on smith machine or a barbell right down grip the bar hard aiming to keep pressure on the meaty portion of your hand so when I grip, my fist is almost facing forward a little bit. Then as I unrack, my wrist is kept straight, pressure all the way down, hard brace for the core, and then rowing the bar down into my chest. Key is making sure that you keep a strong brace throughout and maintain tension across your entire body. It all starts with feet. So plant your feet flat into the ground, contract your glutes slightly, slight extension, unrack, nice and powerful, strong brace across, and then come down and in and press hard. For me, Smith machine pressing is by far the most superior. And it's an exercise that I can load safely over a longer period of time. So for me, it's definitely the king of pressing. what is optimal on paper and what actually isn't optimal in real world and in real practice when it comes to training. So a lot of people at the moment are shunting certain exercises and almost dismissing them. And it could be various exercises such as Smith press or even lying cuff cable wire raise just because of the dogma around certain exercises, whether that's someone being old school and saying that a cable cuff it's not that great when in reality it's probably the best thing you can do for your shoulders or some of the new evidence-based crew dismissing Smith machine work because machines are better. Now in real world when you handle certain loads and you push your body weight up you have to find exercises that not only give you the safety that for example Smith machine will but also offer you the stimulus and the quality stimulus that for example cuffed lateral work will do. So in my opinion, you need to have an open mind if you want to make the most progress and you need to not dismiss any ideas. And ultimately, results don't really care about your feelings or your biases. So focus on results. And more importantly, your effort in the gym is king. And that is what's always going to drive the most progression above anything else.
So intra workout remains the same. We've got 22 grams MPS max and 30 grams of performance fuel. Uh, that has stayed pretty consistent. It will go up over time as my calories increase. But for now, that is my baseline level um, of carbs intra workout, which I have year round, even in deep prep. Towards the back end of prep this year, uh, I still held my 30 grams of carbs intra from performance fuel. I find that's always allowing me to have better recoverability within my session and much better performance and sustainability and energy throughout my session. So if you're not someone who intra workout drink, you might be missing out a trick, both with your training performance and recovery. So get added in. Right guys, so what makes a good chest exercise? A good resistance profile, so you want the machine to be quite heavy in a stretch. Secondly, you want the machine to converge. The function of the pec is not pressing forward and back. So as much as a Smith machine or a machine that just moves in a straight line, it's great. It's never going to be as good as a machine that actually converges. So when you are looking for a good machine or a good exercise for your chest, ideally you want to pick exercises that converge in most cases. So a dumbbell press or a machine chest press that gives you this motion where your arm comes across and in, that is always going to be the most beneficial for people who struggle to develop a good connection with the chest and generally they're using a barbell press or a Smith machine press. Sometimes you may need to opt to use a machine that does give you that motion that mimics the function of your chest. Write it down, get your chest. All right, so with the nitro press, we've got the ability to actually adjust the resistance profile. So all different points have different loading parameters, which makes it an ideal exercise to follow up on after the Smith machine press, which has more of an even resistance profile. Now, loading plates on the middle and at top makes it more lengthened bias. So it's a lot, a lot heavy in the stretch. That's why, as you could see, the last rep, I could really battle through um, and really be able to still get full lockout. Now, this back offset, redistributing the load, it's going to make it even more heavy in the stretch and drop off even more in this range, meaning I can get so much more out of this exercise. So as you could see, I could really battle through the last couple of reps, which I would not be able to do that on any other machine. So this machine really is a game changer. Exercise number five, narrow grip tricep press. So in my opinion, if you want to build a huge tricep, you need to incorporate a free exercise. A narrow grip press, a dip, and a cable extension variation, whether that's a push down or an overhead extension, I do believe you need to get those in if you want full tricep development. So my top four exercises to build a huge tricep would be a narrow grip 
tricep press or a JM press, both pretty much the same or similar. A dip variation for a dip machine or a free weight dip, an overhead tricep extension and a push down variation. That is my four top exercises to build a huge tricep. That will offer you the exercises that are not only compound movements that you can use more load with safely, like the narrow grip presses and dips, but also isolation exercises working different heads of the tricep which I think is extremely important if you want full tricep development. So guys, overhead tricep extension. My two top exercises for tricep. EZ bar, incline skull crusher, using cables. For me, it's the, my all time favorite tricep mass builder. Followed up with a braced single arm overhead cable extension. Now, the easiest way to get a bracing point either pull a bench across and brace your arm into a bench or get your training partner to simply hold your elbow, brace your elbow into his arm and then use that point as a stability point to be able to actually use it as leverage to extend through a little bit harder. Now, more stability you have, more strength, more power, more output, more stimulus and more tension on the muscle which will then lead to more gains.
side lateral tutorial. First and foremost, you need to keep your arm 15 degrees in front of your ribcage. So as a reference point, you always want to keep your arm slightly in front of your ribcage, keeping it in line with the scapular plane. Now, you don't really need to know that, but the principle behind this is keeping your arm in a position where you can freely abduct your arm to the side. Now, the cue that I love for side laterals, whether it's a dumbbell or cable variation, think about actively driving your fist down into the floor and then scraping your knuckles across the floor. Do not restrict your scapular movement and make sure that you focus on driving the arm out to the side rather than up. You want to avoid active shrugging, but a little bit of movement for the shoulder is completely fine. And in my opinion, you should always finish above parallel. Although, yes, your trap will do a little bit of work, your trap actually stabilizes your shoulder, so it's impossible to work your deadline isolation without your traps. So, in my opinion, to get the most out of this exercise, you want to go out here, really reaching this hard, hard range, taking a pause here, and then coming back down in. And this principle applies for all machine laterals, cables, and dumbbells. Right down. We do have a bonus exercise that we will be doing to finish off on, which is a single set of a press-up. A press-up is a fantastic exercise to finish off on, in my opinion. Uh, again, training the chest, front delt, and the tricep. So it's an ideal movement to tick off your push work. We've got a couple of DC stretches to do and then calf work. So it's a, a monster of a session, but to be honest, it's still pretty low volume for me. I still have room to increase my volume when the time comes and if, if time comes and if it's needed. So we'll see. But this is the base plan. A lot of people neglect calves. Your calves can take a lot of volume and frequency. So I actually train them on push day and leg day. Uh, again, this is the stuff that people don't want to do. And this is the stuff that really makes a difference. So you've got to make sure that you do the hard stuff and you do the stuff that you don't want to do and treat it with the same passion as you do the stuff that you want to do. This is the part where I pretend to love calf training when in fact, I probably hate it. Now, train is training.
So that is the session wrapped up. Now we are going to do Meg's check-in as I want to see her post-workout today. So you are going to get to see that, which will be some amazing scenes as she is now at 15 weeks out from the Olympia debut. And I am very much excited to see what we can bring. So all systems go for that now. Her prep hasn't started yet for that. We will be starting in probably two, three weeks time. So I will go over periodization of prep in a little bit more detail in a separate video and how I periodized Meg's entire competitive year in a full video for you very soon. So keep eyes out on the channel. So that is the full session wrapped up. And this is how the logbook is looking. It's a great start point. All right, my guys, so current post-workout meal, and you will get to see a full day of eating, but post-workout meal actually hasn't changed all that much. We still have my prawns and cream of rice. Um, as of today, we'll be having an additional five grams of cream of rice. But so far it has been 125 grams of cream of rice, 100 grams of raspberries, 400 grams of prawns, and 30 grams of kimchi. So this meal actually hasn't changed all that much since prep, apart from additional protein. And now we will be having an additional five grams of cream of rice, which will be the additional carbs from back of the increase that we've had today. So that will be the one. This is how I structure my push workouts and this is my current push A variation in my training program that I will be following after this show into my off season and into my under construction series.